Before CSGO came out, the multiplayer of all official Counter-Strike titles works on the basis of dedicated servers, which are game servers hosted only by the community. Through the internet, using your IP address, you can host your own server via LAN or WAN, and the CS franchise is no stranger to this concept. In the days of dial-up internet, a service called World Opponent Network was used so people can host, but it later evolved to Steam and many other third-party hosting services, which has become pretty standard, especially if you want to run a 24-7 server available for everyone and not just your friends. As for how these servers can operate, there are no preset terms of servers for hosting, and that's great! Combined with how moddable the game engine is, the community has the freedom to create whatever kind of servers they want. It's a perfect system! Except it's not. There are a lot of things I want to discuss on this topic, so let's explore the world of dedicated CS servers. But you should prepare for unforeseen consequences. So you want to play CS 1.6 in the year 2005 plus 18. Cool, the game is still basically the same and there are thousands of people playing it despite them being predominantly from only a couple of regions. Anyway, go into the game, pick a server that has people in it, connect, and the loading will get paused by some sussy downloads. Those are just some server plugins. Just some quality of life improvements, right? Well, they finish downloading, connection is complete, and you see the following. This is what I hate about dedicated servers. Look, I understand that somebody has to pay for the upkeep. There is definitely a cost, but the monetization goes above and beyond. CS boomers love to crap on CSGO for making people pay money for skins, but in 1.6, for a cost, you can become a VIP, which gets you things like a custom player model that can be so out of this world, there is no way to know on which team they are on. Sometimes these models are so disproportionate, they don't match the hitbox, so Good luck finding out where to shoot them at. And it gets worse. These VIPs can have access to better weapons, only they can buy and pick up. And it's not just the skin. Some of these weapons can deal up to 20% more damage and have more ammo than the regular weapons. So it's way easier to get a frag with these things. Other bonuses may include higher base HP, so you cannot one-tap them with an AK or an op. Speaking of HP, they may get even healing items in friggin' CS! Other perks may include voting power for maps or kicking players. Some servers can even allow you to pay to become an admin for even more power tripping. Oh man, if this isn't the definition of pay to win. Finally, this one is frustrating but a bit understandable. Slot reservation. You see a server that's almost full and looks great to join? Too bad, you got dropped due to slot reservation. If you're in an almost full server and a VIP joins, pray you won't be the one getting kicked. When it comes to fun game modes, I don't really mind custom skins and plugins, but it's the rest that really grinds my gears because this kind of stuff gets amplified. For example, pay to win players on zombie servers instantly make it less fun. They get faster ammo pack farming rates, VIP exclusive shops to buy their zombie eraser 5000 with triple the damage and infinite ammo, then jetpacks and laser mines so you can never catch them. Even if you are able to miraculously turn them into a zombie, which takes quite a lot of hits due to their inflated HP, they can buy an infinite amount of antidotes. So you end up with a server that has 1 to 2 immortal pay piggies and 25 zombies scratching their balls out of boredom. And it's basically the same deal with other community game modes. Back to regular vanilla CS. I hate it when the server forces their own weapon model customizations. VIP skins are one thing, but I really don't want to have my default models replaced by the server's custom skins, especially when they have server or clan advertisements plastered onto them. Can I please just revert to defaults? These can range from something small and inoffensive to global offensive, which is not at all what I come to CS 1.6 for. It also sucks when they plaster the maps with ads for their clan or websites. Overall, connecting to these servers can download so much custom bloat to your PC, the game crashes. Besides forced in-game customizations, one very annoying thing that I think everybody has struggled with is when servers edit your config.cfg file. How is this even possible? Most of the time, it makes it so every few minutes while you are in-game, you type in chat promoting a server's IP address. Other times, it can change your nickname. But one of the worst things is when they inject a console command so when you press W, it connects to their servers. Bruh! Also, stop showing up in my favorites list all the time. Time. I never added you. 
If you think this sounds kinda silly, at one point, you could get your PC infected with malware or a Trojan from joining fake servers. It can be that bad. Some servers won't even let you play sometimes. I swear, I've connected to certain servers from a certain country that almost instantly kicks me because I am not from said country. That's stupid. And don't even get me started on servers that force you to register on their forums or social media pages before you get to play. The cherry on top of this is when you first have to download their special software to scan your PC for hacks, which looks like a keygen. Side note, I know some of the footage you saw was fake and recreational because I don't want to drag in specific people or servers, but this is all real and I believe anyone with experience can confirm. The absolute state of CS 1.6 dedicated servers is looking pretty grim these days, huh? Is all of it just hyperbole on my side? Well, not exactly, but it's not like these issues of pay-to-win and other nonsense plugins plague every server, just about one-fourth of them I would say. Disregarding my ranting this entire video, there are still a lot of servers which are pretty normal and the few plugins they include can be improvements. Now I know some people might consider certain plugins cheating or making the game easy, but honestly, simplifying the experience a bit in a casual server can be an improvement. For starters, you can deploy a parachute using E so you don't take fall damage, which is always nice to have. Damage counters, despite being a bit of an RPG element, are always satisfying to see, especially when shooting at a wall. Free weapons. Now, this here is quite the oversimplification when you don't have to think about money, and honestly, I'm conflicted. It's okay, but also kinda wrong. Stats, similar to damage counters, seeing stats after you die or at the end of the round detailing how much damage you did or the MVP is definitely one of those feel-good add-ons. Disabling certain items and features can also be a good thing. No smoke nades, no riot shield, no team flash can be necessary when playing in a 32 people server, especially the shield. And my favorite is no player collision for the first few seconds of the round. There is literally no downsides to having this. And those are the ones that I can think of. There do exist truly vanilla servers, but more often than not, a compromise has to be made. Plugins aside, if you want to play in any server, my rule of thumb is whenever it starts downloading too many things, unless it's a hefty custom game mode, it's not worth the effort. If it has dust you only in the title, <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's an instant red flag for me. Also, beware of bots. If you have Steam CS, you can see how many bots a server has. Sometimes they can be advertising bots in the spectators or in-game bots to inflate the numbers of the server. You can easily identify them by looking at how long they have been in-game. And that's kind of what CS 1.6 dedicated servers look like in this day and age. So if you ever wanted to know that because you were thinking of playing again for nostalgia's sake, or you are just watching this video for nostalgia, either way, if you go ahead and play, it might be fun. Servers won't be alive forever. At some point, it'll all be empty. Probably. Eh. Well, I gotta go tend to my defrosting chicken tendies. They are probably ready. But did I turn on the oven and forget about it? Oh no. Oh.